Hello, I'm Samia Kobi from Purdue University. Today I'll be presenting our work titled Style, Exploring and Debugging Social Biases in Pre-trained Text Representations. Pre-trained text representations such as word embedding are known to show social biases and stereotypes that they learn from the training data. Current algorithms can detect word biases from text representations. However, these solutions are predefined template or word-based. Also, there is no interaction support where users can freely inspect new types of biases or modify definitions for existing biases. Apart from automatically detecting and mitigating predefined biases, some existing work also provides visualization support for bias detection. However, these tools are either limited to only tabular data, or even if they provide support for text data, they lack support for intersectional bias. Moreover, existing solution can only answer what biases are there, but cannot answer how and why those biases were developed, and there is no option to trace back to training data. To understand the user needs for bias detection in natural language processing models, we reviewed research papers that have proposed visual analytics tools for detecting and mitigating biases, as well as related need finding studies. Based on the findings from these papers, we came up with a list of user needs and design rationale that need to be addressed. A recent study finds that data scientists, machine learning developers, and practitioners wish to interactively explore biases related to a domain or area of interest. Previous bias detection techniques have shown that a tool should accurately quantify and measure bias so that a user can identify the degree and severity of that bias. Hence, quantifying bias in text corpora is an important user need. Previous studies also show that machine learning developers and practitioners and data scientists struggle to find biases within limited time and resource. Hence, quick and intuitive exploration of biases is necessary. Previous work also show that users should be able to effectively compare between biases so that they can understand the severity and rank the biases based on the severity. And finally, previous studies have shown the necessity of understanding, debugging, and validating detected biases. As shown by a recent study, an effective way to understand the source of a bias is to investigate the training data. To address the user needs and design rationale, in this paper, we propose a lightweight interactive system style for data scientists, machine learning, developers and practitioners to explore and debug biases in pre-trained text representations. Style supports multiple coordinated views to help machine learning developers and practitioners detect and debug biases in real time. The first step of style is to quantify bias in text data for a given word and a demographic subgroup. We have used an extension of relative norm difference algorithm to quantify and calculate bias scores. For this extension, we have added n subgroups instead of only two subgroups. The system will initially come up with some basic bias types such as gender, race, and income level. Each of these bias types has multiple demographic subgroups. Each subgroup is represented by a list of descriptive words. To calculate the bias of a word with respect to a specific subgroup, the average embedding vector is calculated to represent the embedding for that demographic subgroup. Finally, the cosine similarity is calculated to compute the similarity distance between a given word and the demographic subgroup. The bias score is always between minus 1 to plus 1. A word is considered to be related to the demographic subgroup for which it has the highest bias score. For example, if a word has higher bias score for male compared to female or transgender or any other subgroups, style considers it as a bias between that word and the male subgroup. Users can also add new demographic group to inspect, inspect, add, or remove any existing subgroups and even edit the descriptive words. They can inspect new bias types such as age, religion, etc. Upon detection of the biases, all biases are visualized in a card diagram. The card diagram is used to show the bird's eye view of all detected biases in a certain topic. For this example, the topic is crime. Users can quickly glance over the card diagram and identify what individual or intersectional biases are present there. The card diagram shows all the words in a selected topic around the outer circle. The cards inside the card diagram represent different biases. When you hover over the cards, all words associated with that bias are highlighted in the same color. 
The cars with two ends represent intersectional bias, and the cars with one end represent individual bias. For example, the intersectional bias of black and male is associated with the words like murder, crimes, homicide, etc. Also, when you hover over different words, all biases associated with that word is highlighted. For example, the word felony is associated with intersectional bias of black, low income, and young subpopulation. The higher width of the card towards a demographic subgroup means higher association or bias score. Style also provides an instance view to explore the sources of biases from the training data. Once users know what biases are present in a given topic, they can start to verify and understand the source of the identified biases using the instance view. For example, if the user is interested to know how the word felony is associated with black and male subpopulation, they can click on the corresponding card in the card diagram and also filter the instances based on the word felony. The user can then examine different instances here. So here she can see that the word uh, felony is highly accompanied by male specific pronouns like he, his, mister, etc. And also as you can see, there are mentions of words like black. Examining such instances gives users um, an idea of how the model is making a superficial relationship between felony and uh, male and black demographic subgroups. Style also provides a bias editor to define and customize bias types. If a user wants to know how a demographic subgroup is defined, they can expand the bias type and examine the words used to define this subgroup. Users can also edit those words. A user can also declare a new bias type to be inspected. For this example, the user has declared religion to be a new, new bias type. Furthermore, a user can disable any existing biases. This helps users to focus on the bias types of interest and also let them declutter the card diagram. If users want to compare and contrast between two models trained on the same dataset, they can use the model selection feature of style to directly compare the severity and number of detected biases for different models for the same topic. This can help users to select models with fewer or less severe biases in their application. To evaluate how effective style is in bias identification and understanding of biases, we conducted an in-lab user study with 15 participants. Our participants had varying level of AI and machine learning expertise and also varying level of experience in AI fairness. We used GLOVE and Word2Vec for our context free embedding. These two models were trained on same dataset, which is a 10,000 news dataset from sources like CNN, New York Times, etc. We also used BERT as the option for contextualized embedding. We compared the performance in bias identification and verification using style with another baseline tool, WordBias. Each user received 20 minutes for each of the tools to identify and verify as many biases as possible. Since the word bias tool does not have any support for exploring training data, we provided the user with the data in the form of a spreadsheet. Users were allowed to use any external tool or text editor for navigating the data in the spreadsheet. Whenever uh, users documented a new bias, they had to verify the bias using the data and had to document the source of biases. Any documented biases without the explanation of the source of biases were considered to be invalid. Our results show that users identify more biases using style for all three models. On top of that, users often documented wrong reason or documented completely incorrect biases when using word bias. We believe allowing a side-by-side -side data exploration feature helps users to verify bias in style and help them correct any mistakes that they might have made by just looking at the list or visualization of detected biases. Our individual user ratings also show that our, um, users found both the card diagram and the instance view to be very helpful in their bias identification and debugging process. To measure how well users understand the reason um, of the source of biases, we computed the word length of the descriptions of biases um, for each of the documented biases for both tools. Our results show that on average, style users use 61% more words to describe the source or reason of a bias. You can see one example of um, such description by participant four. The participant is showing better uh, and high level insight into the reason for the association between the word soldier to be male and white, which the participant found to be mostly news articles about military activities by white dominant countries. 
further understand the utility and potential of style, we conducted semi-structured interviews with six experts who have expertise in AI and machine learning fairness and visualization. We emailed the authors of several related papers to this work for recruitment. Five experts are faculty or postdoctoral researchers in R1 universities in the US, and one expert is a researcher in the industry. All six experts have at least one peer-reviewed research paper in top chair conferences on the topic of their expertise. The semi-structured interviews lasted for 30 minutes on average. Each expert were shown a demo of style accompanied by three usage scenarios. Experts were encouraged to give feedback anytime during the demo. After the demo, we asked feedback from experts regarding the usability, utility, downstream application, limitation, and room for improvement for style. Our results show that all experts found style to be very intuitive and useful. Five out of six experts like the ability to go back and forth between identified biases and actual source in the training data. They found the most effective features to be the visual summary of the bias and the data, and also the ability to compare between different models and biases. E2 mentioned that using this tool can help identify source of data that shouldn't be included in the training process. When, asked the, when we asked the experts about uh, what other downstream applications they can think of where style will be useful, we received multiple feedback, including digital humanities, such as in theater where writers can use this tool to compare scripts of different genre. Experts also believe this tool can be useful as a checkpoint in data cleaning process for organizations that handle large training corpora. One expert also mentioned that if a company does not want to include specific data in the machine learning pipeline for data cleaning or data devising uh, process, they can use style to check for um, bias without integrating the data into machine learning pipeline and compromising the privacy. From our user study and also as pointed out by the expert, style suffer from certain limitations. So the first limitation is overwhelmingness of style. Some of our experts and users mentioned that the initial overload, information overload for style is very high. Also, some experts say that the use of too many colors can be one reason for the overwhelmingness. We also asked the experts to, for the suggestions of how can we mitigate this. So some experts suggested that using a step-by-step -step onboarding tutorial can help reduce the initial information overload. Also, one expert suggested that using monochromatic color and utilizing highlighting more can help us reduce the use of many color. The next limitation is our choice of bias metric. Our bias metric is largely dependent on the descriptive words. So future work can be trying out additional bias metrics. Also, we have added the bias editor to mitigate this limitation so that the user can add, modify the bias uh, or descriptive words. The next limitation is that our tool is limited to English only. In future, we plan to incorporate um, word embeddings from other language in its style. And the last limitation is that when users found out biases using uh, our system, the trust in their trust in the model was actually going down. So we believe some very good research, uh, future research opportunities could be to understand the relationship between bias suggestion mechanism and user trust surrounding a word embedding or um, any other NLP models. Thank you for listening to our talk. Please refer to our paper if you have any more questions.